Have you ever been in a place that made you think to yourself, ah, this place is weird. I love places like that, whether it's in a real life or if it's in a video game. So with your permission, I would like to take you on a tour of some odd and unremarkable places in Mario Kart 64. Let's go on a trip, trip. Roll the footage. Well, this first place that I'm gonna show you, I don't think it's gonna come as any surprise, but I feel like if I didn't include it in this video, all the comments would just be people saying, hey, you should go there. This is, of course, the Mario 64 Castle replica in Royal Raceway. Now, I think anyone who's played uh, Mario Kart 64 and indeed uh, Mario Kart 8, which this uh, track is remade in, has come down this way and looked at it. Uh, but let's just take a moment, and, but I do want to take a moment and just feel how odd some of the little details here are. Number one, sitting on this bridge looking out uh, over these hills, something about the mix of colors and the static of the sky really gives this a vibe that I cannot quite describe. I think it, it probably is just that vibe that, that a lot of you guys talk about in the comments when uh, discussing just old 3D games and how weird they can feel. But what we're seeing just objectively here is definitely really weird like these trees with the outlines on them which is also funny because they it just looks worse than it did in mario 64 despite being later on the same system you know like if you go up to these doors in mario 64 the the handles on the doors are uh three-dimensional and on this no no way also interesting is the water texture out here we're getting one of my favorite um, details from Spyro the Dragon here, which is that the water does not move. It is just a flat, solid looking texture. And I like that very much. Other things that don't move, the flag, completely static. I don't know if that was the case in uh, Mario 64 or not, but it is the case here. In some ways, you could think of this as uh, perhaps the quintessential odd and unremarkable space. And it's one that a lot of us have been to, that we have experience with. So it's always always good to mention those. I really never did realize just how crude this game looks. Did people know that at the time? You know, were there like reviews of this game that came out where like the graphics are horrible? Because look at, I mean, look at how lifeless this is come a long way mario kart 8 really uh come a long way this next place is a little zone in wario stadium that always stood out a little bit to me i don't know what it is about me and being up against walls but something about the final turn of the lap in wario stadium always made me feel weird and i think it's and i think it's for a couple of reasons number one when you stop and look at it that is a lot of wario faces it gave me the same feeling as when you're at if you've ever been to a roller rink and you skated all the way down to the far end where it was just like the padded wall and the emergency exit so it was just like a dark door all the way down on the end and you're up against the wall kind of far away from your friends and far away from where the arcade and all the food and stuff is you're just like tucked away in a little zone. That's kind of how I feel being up against this wall. But in addition, look at this sign. Have you ever really looked at that sign and the, and just this space in general? I know I talked about it briefly on the uh, in the previous locale, but Mario Kart 64 has a really lifeless atmosphere to it. And I guess when you get down to it, most video games do, right? If you stop sort of the simulation, if you stop participating, it is gonna start to feel a little bit weird. Another thing I really enjoy about stopping in this area in Wario Stadium is if you're very gentle with your gaze, you can actually see how we are outdoors at night. And I know that that's obvious because you can see the stars up above, right? But when I would play this level as a kid, it never felt outdoors. And it's only when I stop and sort of take in the whole picture that I can start to see this as an outdoor stadium. In my in my head canon, it always felt like an indoor stadium. I don't know if anyone agrees with that. We're outdoors and Wario Stadium has weird, the vibes are off in Wario Stadium, okay? That's all you need to know. I'll tell you what, if there's one thing I've, I've been learning uh, from doing this, it's that Skybox appreciation for this game would be a snooze fest. Whoa, except maybe not, look at those horribly pixelated mountains. Wow, this, this whole thing actually really kind of has a vibe going. All right, maybe we'll do a skybox appreciation after all. Did you realize as a kid how pixelated those trees are? Cause that is, that's offensive. I didn't, I had no clue they looked this horrible. Look at this. Anyway, here's the next location. Are you ready for this? 
Yeah. What is going on here? Have you ever turned around and looked at this? Because I haven't. The mouth of this cave looks way different from this angle. I mean, we're, we're all used to seeing this, you know? Coming up here, coming out. Boom, bang, next lap, here we go. But I never, I never turned around and looked at it like this. What is going on? I also want to take a moment to appreciate the the odd uh, and unremarkable vibes looking down uh, the canyon here. This freaks me right out. Once again, not something I ever looked at. And I don't think I'm into it. Look at how high those walls are, for God's sake. It's so freakishly artificial. I think it's fair to say that uh, DK Jungle Parkway it's just got weird. It's weird. It's a weird place. I don't like how this cavern looks. It reminds me of Pokemon Snap. If I went to bed tonight and I had a lucid dream that I was stuck in DK Jungle Parkway, I would be very frightened. Anyway, take a look at this boat, and then we'll go on to the last one. Very nice. Where's the boat going? Does it just turn around at the waterfall? That seems ludicrously dangerous. Yeah, you just do, do a three-point turn on the edge of a waterfall. That's might as well. Who as a kid didn't imagine walking out into the infinite uh, calamari desert on this track in Mario Kart? It's a sprawling, endless landscape with nothing in your way other than a computer that makes you have to go back and get picked up by a cow man. It's an endless sunny gradient full of possibility and you can't go out into any of it. There aren't very many Mario Kart tracks that aren't walled off in one way or another. DK Jungle Parkway that we were just on obviously has those walls that you can't go by. But the only thing stopping an infinite desert adventure here is, you know, Lakitu comes and takes you away. And I think it's for that reason that Calamari Desert always stood out to me as having a really strong emotional resonance. Also, the music helps. The only restrictions on you are arbitrary, and, they're only, and it's only because of the rules of the road that you're not allowed to go do whatever you want, you know? Now, of course, with Calamari Desert, what is truly uh, the most interesting and weird feeling place to sit? It's inside the train tunnel, of course. Much like the castle in Royal Raceway, uh, the Calamari Desert is an iconic representation of that feeling of breaking the rules that you get when you go out of bounds in a video game. That feeling that I talked about uh, where it feels like you're behind a restaurant near the dumpster. The feeling of being somewhere you shouldn't be. You're not on the track. You're not. This isn't something that exists for uh, the purposes of winning the race. This is just an extra thing that you have no reason to engage with. And in fact, engaging with this, going in the tunnel, does what? It just makes you lose the race, you know? And it's a risk on account of there's a train. Maybe there's a, a dividing line amongst gamers. You're either the type of gamer who spent their childhood at the castle in Royal Raceway and going down the tunnels in Calamari Desert, or you're the type of gamer that was good at Mario Kart 64 and didn't have time for that kind of silly nonsense because you were too busy winning. Which type are you? Did you spend time in the Calamari Desert train tunnel? I mean, who didn't? Who didn't? How could you not? It's, it's iconic. It's like the whole point, the whole thing that makes Calamari Desert remarkable. And by remarkable, of course, I mean unremarkable. Welcome to my series, Odd and Unremarkable. Anyway, you guys don't need to hear me uh, get heated and wax poetic about the tunnel in Calamari Desert. That's not a good use of our time. You need to go to bed. You need to go to bed and I need to finish this video. So that's that. You know, one funny thing about DK's Jungle Parkway, I know I'm just talking about DK Jungle Parkway after that, but uh, you know how beautiful it is. You see this. One of you guys, name of Spaghetti, sent me these. They're little tiny paintings of some of my favorite places in Mario Kart 64. That's DK Jungle Parkway, and that's Rainbow Road. So if you want a little tiny painting of one of your uh, favorite places in a video game, you can find a link to what they do probably in the description maybe on the screen right now anyway thank you so much for watching this video i really appreciate it if you enjoyed it please leave a comment that says hey i like this video please make more uh videos like this if you have any suggestions for games that you think have great odd and unremarkable places you can post those down below as well but if you did not like this video please do not post that because uh, if you do it'll trick me 
and I'll make a bunch of videos you don't like. I am here to serve you. If you want to be here to serve me, you can go to www.patreon.com slash any underscore Austin. This is a viewer supported channel. I cannot do it without your help. And if you subscribe to the Patreon, you get access to a regular Patreon check-in video series slash podcast where we answer your listener questions, look at your favorite moments from the past 10 years of this uh, YouTube channel, and just generally talk about, you know, what we've been playing and whatever else the heck. And I do have merch. You'll see I'm wearing an odd and unremarkable t-shirt with three of our favorite places we went in Ocarina of Time. Currently, Ocarina of Time is the only um, odd and unremarkable shirt that I've made, but if you'd like one for Mario Kart 64 or Majora's Mask or whatever, I might be happy to do little sketches of those places as well. The last thing I have to tell you today is in my free time, I make a lot of music. That's one of my main uh, hobbies. The way, one of the main way made it, it, one of the main ways I release uh, stress is by making music. You can hear that music in every single one of my YouTube videos as well as on all streaming services. And today, I've got a good one for you. Please. Enjoy the song. I'll see you next time, everybody. Adios.